morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, February 24th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle, and I am joined by the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Bax, Ohio State's basketball team upset Wisconsin 83-73 to last night in Columbus. 18 points for C.J. Jackson, including 4-4 of from three-point range, 17 points from Jaquan Lyle, and 15 points and 12 rebounds from Jay Sean Tate. He had a double-double in the first half. So he didn't even really do that much in the second half. He had a double-double by halftime. Tate did. Uh, Bax, very impressive performance from the Buckeyes. Uh, your thoughts? Well, first of all, I'm absolutely in a state of shock that the 13th-ranked team in the Big Ten just beat the 16th-ranked team in the country. But I'm also <laughs> thrilled and tickled pick. Like, for a lot of people out there, whenever I wrote what I did earlier this year, which is that I believe we're watching the slow decline at the end of the Thad Bata era, you know, that doesn't mean I don't want them to win. Jeez, I'd love nothing more than sad to prove me completely wrong and go out and win a bunch of games, see these basketball Buckeyes go on a run, sneak into the tournament. Like, I want to see the Buckeyes win at everything. That doesn't change just because I think it's probably not going to look great for Thad in the long run. And I'm just tickled pink that this Buckeyes team went out and did what they did. Obviously, C.J. Jackson and Jason Tate had huge games, but it, it just it's it's a nice it's a nice feeling to see the basketball team actually beat a ranked team again. It's been a long time, and I mean, it just I'm excited and I'm happy. Even if this is really the only good high point of the entire season for the Buckeyes, it's nice to get something like this, you know? Because this used to be common with that teams that used to come into the into the Schottenstein Center ranked in the top 20, and they would just get smacked down by the defense of Ohio State. And I'm just I'm, I'm happy. Let's put it that way. I'm shocked and happy that they won that game. I was really happy last night. I'm still happy that they won, of course. But I was thinking this morning, in a way it's kind of frustrating because it shows how good this team can be. And not necessarily play as well as they did last night every game, but it does show how good this team can be. And there is no way, Bax, we should be sitting here right now talking about a team that's 16 and 13 overall, 6 and 10 in Big Ten play, they have no chance of making an NCAA tournament unless they win the Big Ten tournament, which they're not going to do that. Uh, they have just flat out underachieved for most of the season. Yeah, and I agree with you. And honestly, that's what has their criticism of Thad been even when Thad was running teams into the Sweet 16 on a yearly basis, right? That a lot of his players didn't develop. Once you got, once they got to Columbus, there really wasn't much improvement after they got to Columbus. We all point Evan Turner as the one true example of a player developing beyond getting to Columbus. And a lot of these guys that we have right now on this team, you know, we saw some flashes, but have any of them really developed here? I would argue the answer to that is no. They're pretty much the same product they were when they got, when they got on campus. And that's kind of sustained itself from the start of the Thad Mata era to today, that you don't really see that significant step forward from players that you might see at these other programs. And, you know, you're right. There's, there's potential in these guys. And I think – T.J. Jackson getting his opportunity to play a lot more at midseason has done some good things for this team. But, you know, it all comes back to the same discussion of why can't we get this kind of performance even close to it on a nightly basis. You know, you can't lose to Nebraska and then beat Wisconsin. That just doesn't make sense. That's the, like if this, was, this was the equivalent of a college football team knocking, like, off a top-10 team on a Thursday night at home, you know, all the whole country watches – but then losing the next Saturday to a team who's going to finish 5-7. and seven. So uh, that's the thing is, is when you can't have any of that consistency, it comes back on player development. And unfortunately, that's not kind of the same circle that we've been looking at. Let's pivot to some Ohio State football recruiting. Westerville South running back Jalen Gill will announce his decision on March 1st backs. He is an extremely high four-star recruit, really knocking on the door to being a five-star recruit, ranked as the number 30 overall prospect in the country in the 2018 class and the third best all-purpose back, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Uh, back there are 19 crystal ball predictions for Gill, and all 19 have him going to Ohio State. Uh, I'd say that's a pretty good sign. So he's, he's going to announce on uh, March 1st. Um, just your thoughts on uh, Gill's upcoming announcement. Well, I think I told you two or three years ago now that Jalen Gill was eventually going to be a Buckeye. Uh, if you remember... <laughs> But I, I know some folks at Westerville South, and uh, the back when Marcus Williamson was being recruited, it was flat out told me he was all Buckeye. Um, secret, I was the boarding house source on one of those boarding houses three years ago. But um, Jalen Gill was the one that everybody was talking about, even when Marcus Williamson was evolving into a, 
four-star prospect that would eventually go down south for his senior year because he wanted to keep developing. And Gill is a guy who, just like Williamson, Williamson was the first guy in a long time from Westerville South to go to Ohio State, despite the fact that school sends three to five D1 kids on a fairly consistent basis to schools every year, right? So, to me, Jalen Gill has been as sure of a thing to be a Buckeye as I can remember for a very long time. It's a very good thing he's going to be a Buckeye. Obviously, he's one of the best players in the country, and I'm glad he's not dragging it out. That's, that's the best thing I can say is that this, this kid's a hell of a prospect who should be in the Scarlet and Gray, and I'm glad he's just saying, dude, it's obvious I'm going to be a Buckeye. Let's just get this over with. Let's close the show by talking about Ohio State's 2017 football schedule. It's an interesting schedule. I don't think it's quite as tough as last year's schedule, but um, still tough. Uh, you know, not an easy slate by any means. Uh, they lead off the season uh, playing a Big Ten foe for the first time since 1976. They go on the road to play Indiana in week one, and the irony is thick there with Kevin Wilson hit coaching his first game for the Buckeyes against uh, Indiana. And then, of course, they play Oklahoma the second week, the uh, rematch from last year. Um, on the road against Michigan this year, they don't do the Michigan and uh, Michigan State and Michigan back-to-back weeks like they have the last couple years. They do play Michigan State in November, though, but there is a week between they play Illinois then uh, before they play Michigan. Uh, just your thoughts on Ohio State's 2017 football schedule, Dax? Well, I think there's – I agree with you. I think the degree of difficulty is much less compared to last year. Last year had the three killer big road games against three teams that ultimately ended up being top ten kind of teams, which – you know, that's, that's crazy difficult. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. That's an utter gauntlet last year, and we saw what happened when the Buckeyes had to play those kind of games. I don't see that this year. First of all, Indiana without Kevin Wilson, and even further without his offensive coordinator, who their new coach ran off, is going to stink. They're going to go back to being boring Indiana, and Ohio State might drop 70 points on them on opening night. Um, Oklahoma's a good team again, but guess what? Now they're in the shoe. And I don't – if they couldn't win at home last year, if they got blow, blown out at home last year, I don't see them beating Ohio State in the horseshoe this year with most of that team back. Um, then you have two boner games. It's like Army and then some random team from, like, New Mexico or something. I didn't remember. UNLV. It's, it's, U, so it's UNLV. UNLV, yeah. Hey, the running Rebels basketball team out there. Maybe that will be more interesting. Um, but then, like, you have Penn State at home. I can guarantee you that's going to be a night game. And then – you're, but look who else you have. You have uh, Maryland at home is going to be a, uh, a, the homecoming noon game. And honestly, I think Maryland's going to be better this year. That one's kind of a sneaky kind of game, to be honest, because I think that they have some talent. But Ohio State should beat them badly. They have Illinois at home. And as, as much as Lovey Smith might be getting some improvements to that program, they're not a threat to OSU. Michigan State at home late in the year will be interesting. Obviously, you've got to go on the road to that school of North, but they just lost 40 seniors. So... I don't know how they're going to end up being at the end of the year. I'm sure it'll be a challenge because Harbaugh's teams are always good. But are they going to be as good as this year? I don't think so. Um, and then I think I believe they go to Nebraska this year. And I think that's the one game I'm interested to see play out because Nebraska, Ohio State beat them by 59 points last year. But there's still enough talent there to make that probably a fairly interesting game. I think you can feel confident saying that's going to be a night game as well. But, this schedule doesn't intimidate me like last year. Like, I, I Grant and I have some a little bit of a rosy outlook every time it comes to Ohio State schedule preseason, right? I kind of follow Mr. Bucknut saying, man, they might lose a game, but I couldn't tell you which one, and so I'm just going to pick them to win all of them. Last year was the first time in a couple of years, since 2011 actually, that I said I think Ohio State loses a game. And I, put, I picked out one of the road games in the Big Ten. Now, I'm, I'm sorry that I was wrong, or I was right on those, but – you know, in the end, we all recognized last year was an enormous challenge for Ohio State football in terms of the schedule they had to play. You know, the SEC people even had to shut up and respect it. This year is not as difficult of a schedule, and Ohio State is a way more veteran team. It sets up very well for the Buckeyes winning one or two of those key games, which would be the Penn State game at home, which would be the Michigan State game, and, of course, that game against that School of North. Those are the big games. I mean, I, even Oklahoma, you can lose and still make the playoffs. So I do think the Buckeyes are going to win that one as well. This is not the same ballpark of difficulty as last year's schedule. Great insights from the people's champ, Matt Baxendale. Thank you very much, Bax. You can catch his column every Sunday. It is, of course, the bucket. And thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I really appreciate it, and I hope you have a great weekend. Let's hear some Buckeye swag, best damn band in the land. Bye.